Hey everybody, it's Bren. Um, today we're going to be going over how to track a shot, more specifically um, a crane shot in Mocha AE CS6, uh, which comes prepackaged with the After Effects CS6. So uh, let's get started. Um, as you can see in this shot, we've got a, a crane shot, and you can see it's really, really dramatic. And to me, this is one of the more uh, harder shots to, to track by hand and when you do do this by hand it's it's a real pain so I mean you, you're basically putting this shot which has basically a dolly a pan uh, the, a, a change in the height you're, you're changing translation and perspective all into one shot so this makes it very very difficult to, to track by hand so um, this is what I want to be able to place uh, on the screen instead of what we've got here so to start out make sure you select your footage and then you go up to the animation menu and come down to track in Mocha AE and what that does is it'll launch uh, Mocha AE and if you've never registered it'll give you this pop-up for the first time so I usually just skip and hit register later um, after the pop-up uh, you'll get the welcome screen which comes up and uh, uh, this is a good thing to double check to make sure that you're importing the correct clip. This is where you can change your name and uh, the location. Um, the other thing you want to double check is to make sure that your sequence settings from After Effects matches what is shown on this uh, welcome screen. So for instance, you want to make sure that it's the same exact uh, amount of time uh, in Mocha it shows how much frames it is and then you want to make sure it's also the same exact frame rate your your pixel aspect ratio and uh, your fields of interlace if any um, but Mocha is actually pretty good at uh, picking out what you already have so first off what you're gonna want to do is uh, name your project uh, this one I'm just gonna call it test and hit OK I already have one so I'm gonna just overwrite it. So now you've got your your footage into Mocha AE and what you want to do is scrub through and find where exactly your shot ends and begins. So as I'm scrubbing through uh, my shot begins around 69 frames so I'm gonna hit this button which is to set an endpoint. Now I'm gonna scrub it through to find the out point which starts or ends at 379 so I'm gonna hit this button to set my out point. Last I'm gonna hit this button which zooms the timeline basically to show just the in and out points. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, scrub through and find whatever we're, we want to track find wherever it's the largest and then that's where you wanna begin your x-spline. So right after that what you wanna do is create an x-spline and what you wanna do is create your your x-spline around the screen or whatever you're tracking it doesn't have to be exact you just need it to be able to take in as much information as possible and then the next thing you want to come down to is to make sure you're on perspective because it's such a dynamic shot you want translation scale rotation shear and perspective selected and then you also want to come down to the minimum percentage pixels used and change that to 90 percent uh, usually that's a good number Make sure you're at the point wherever you created your x-spline, and then you go ahead and start tracking. Because I have the minimum percent of pixels set to 90, the track is going to take a little bit longer, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this so you don't have to sit here and watch this. All right, now it's done tracking. So what you want to do is go ahead and play it back to make sure that it tracked it properly. So it might play slow from the for the first time, but that's actually sometimes a good thing. You can actually see if it's tracking it properly. I mean, it, you can see already at the at the bottom, it's a sliding out just a little bit. Don't worry if your, your shot goes outside of the screen. Mocha is actually smart enough. It tries to use whatever else uh, of data it's got left. So technically, Mocha is not using the, the points to track it. It's using the whole surface that you've selected, and it's translating all the pixels and how they change in that. So 
if you scrub through, I mean, it's it's actually not too bad. I mean, you could actually just take this already, but I'm going to do a couple more things just to make it a little bit smoother. You're going to come up to click this blue button, which gives you the planar surface. And what it does is it makes sure that whatever you're tracking, um, it's on the correct surface. So, for instance, this screen is actually pretty easy. Um, you can tell if it's not on its surface or not. The next thing you want to do once you're done adjusting uh, your planar surface is to go ahead and resize it to whatever you're, you're tracking and whatever you're going to be replacing it with. So because I'm replacing this screen, I want to make it just a little bit bigger than the screen because I don't want to show any of this screen uh, anymore. Once you're done adjusting it, you can scrub through and you'll see that it's still linked. And then the next thing you want to do is come to import clip and then what I use is the the 16 grid. So you can actually see what your tracking is doing. See now you can really see uh, when I play it back that it kind of goes, it slides out a little bit. I find that the because the this checkerboard grid you can you can tell when it kind of moves around a little bit. So because I know it slides out a little bit, I'm going to take this back to the very beginning and uh, come over here and turn off the, the grid and then come down to adjust track. Now what this does when you click it, it creates a keyframe for you. It's like an extra step to the, the tracking and then it'll use this data to adjust it. So what you're doing is you're selecting a point, something high contrast preferably, to track or set keyframes throughout the whole shot. So I'm going to use the, the insides of the X on all four corners. And I'm going to scrub through. And as you watch, you'll see that the, the, the planar surface goes off by a little bit. So either <coughs> right there you can see it. Um, what you can do is you can either use these, the left, up, down, and right, or you can do it by hand, but there's also this little auto button. So if you click that, it moves it automatically, and then you can go to all the different corners and just hit auto. I find that this is usually the easiest, and if I need to make other minor adjustments, I go ahead and hit use the up, down, and left, and right. And then once you do that, it creates keyframes for you. So whatever... Uh, corner you're on it'll create a keyframe so you just scrub through again and then find wherever it it's it goes off the furthest and then you want to go ahead and create a keyframe right there so I think that's where it goes off the most I'm gonna hit auto and then I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the rest of them now you see that this one has gone off the screen don't worry about that you can just go ahead and go to where it comes back and just adjust all the rest of them again. Now you can see it's it's not going off too much. I'm not going to go over too many other keyframes other than just the last one and then you, you, you'll get the point. So once you're done setting all your keyframes what you want to do is bring up the grid or your picture again just to make sure. Now you can see that it's actually following it pretty good so I'm actually pretty happy with that, so it doesn't look that bad. Another thing you can do is go ahead and stabilize it. And what that does is it takes whatever you have selected and it stabilizes the, the footage around that. So you can see if it's, if it's actually sitting pretty good. Uh, that's another method of doing it. There's all kind of different ways to, to make sure that your, your planar surface is, is tracked properly and everything looks good. But because this looks pretty good, uh, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and export the tracking data. So that's found down over here. And then you want to make sure for this particular one, you want to have After Effects Corner pin, which supports motion blur text. And go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. Go back to After Effects. And then we're going to scrub through and find where the beginning of that shot begins. And I already have it preset. So I'm going to turn on the what I'm replacing with the screen and I'm going to hit paste, oh wrong one. Uh, make sure that you have whatever you're going to be doing selected and then go ahead and paste that. Now you can see that it 
replaced it. Now you can just scrub through and make sure that it looks pretty good. And that's not too bad. So yeah, that's a real quick basic run through of how to do this in uh, Mocha, uh, tracking a crane shot. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Thanks.